Have you ever wanted to supercharge your Python CLI tools and take them to the next level? Today, we're going to go on an exhilarating journey as we harness the combined power of Python, Rust, PyO3, Maturin, and Typer to create a blazingly fast CLI tool that will make all your data analyst friends jealous. Get ready to dive into the world of high-performance computing, ultimate speed, and seamless integration. Are you ready? Let's get rusty. Before we get started, there are a couple of things I want to get out of the way. This video is not intended as an introduction to Rust, PyO3, or Maturin. If you want to get a basic overview of how to get set up with PyO3 and Maturin, you can watch my previous video on the topic. I'd also like to make it clear that, like many of you, I'm sure, I am a Rust beginner. This means that my code isn't going to be perfect, and I wholeheartedly welcome constructive feedback in the comments. So what are we building today? We're going to be building CSV Sum, a type of CLI tool that takes in a path to some CSV files and sums down the same column in each of them. The tool will keep track of both the running total and the total for each file, so you'll be able to get an overview at the end. If you're not familiar with Typer, it's an excellent CLI library for Python. I'm going to be glossing over a lot of the type of code in this video, but if you'd like an intro to it, you can watch the video linked in the top corner of your screen now. Right, now that that's out of the way, let's get started. We're first going to create our CSV sum project with Maturin new CSV sum. This will scaffold out the project structure and create the necessary files for us. In our lib.rs file, we're going to start by creating our data structures. The first data structure we'll need is file total. This is going to represent a single CSV file and the sum total for our chosen column. We'll give it two fields, path, which is a string, and total, which is a 64-bit float. By using a float, we account for having both integers and floats in our program. Now we get to our first bit of PyO3 fun. We can annotate our struct with the PyClass attribute, which will tell PyO3 that we want to be able to pass file total objects to our Python programs. We'll add the module parameter to tell PyO3 that the class should show the object as csvsum.filetotal, and the getAll parameter to make PyO3 generate our Python getters for our struct fields. Without getAll, we wouldn't be able to access access the path or total values from Python. We'll also create the CSV sum type, which will store the overall sum for all our CSVs and a vector of file total objects. You can think of a Rust vector as equivalent to a Python list. In fact, PyO3 will automatically convert our vector to a list when we pass our CSV sum objects back to Python. Let's get to some actual programming. We want our users to be able to work with two types of CSVs, those with headers and those without. As such, we'll want our users to be able to specify either a column name to sum or a column index to sum. This means we're going to need two functions, sum by header and sum by index. We'll annotate these both with the Py function attribute so that we can export them later. Since we're going to be summing columns in both cases, we'll also also create a sum column function that we'll populate later. Before we begin with our implementation, we're going to need a way to read our CSV files. Thankfully, there's a great crate available called CSV, so install that into your project by running cargo add CSV from your terminal. Now, let's start with sum by header. This function is going to take in a list of CSV paths to sum over and the name of the header we want, and return a py result object, which can either be a CSV sum or an error. We're ultimately going to want a list of file total objects, so let's start by iterating over our vector of paths. We'll use the map method to return a new object for each of our path objects. The map function takes a closure that will receive our path, which we'll call p. We'll first create a CSV reader from p using the expect method to cause our programs to panic if this fails. I'll leave it as an exercise to the reader to implement proper error handling. Next, we'll get the headers from our CSV before finding the index of the header that matches the header specified by the user using the position method. We can then pass our CSV reader and the index of the column of interest to the sum column function, which will return the total total for that column. The last part of this closure is going to return a file total struct with our sum and our path. Whew, that was a lot, but we're not quite done. Now that we've mapped over our paths, we can call the collect method to give us our final vector of file total objects. To get the sum for all files, we'll iterate over our vector, use map to get the total field, and then call the sum method. Finally, we'll return a CSV sum object. The sum by index function is much the same, except this time we already have the index of the column we need to sum. We also need to tell the CSV crate that the CSV file has no header, which we can do using the CSV reader builder. Finally, we just need to implement the sum column function, which is fairly straightforward. We iterate over the CSV reader, get the value at the specified index, pass it to a float, and sum those up. The last step is to register our sum by header, sum by index, and CSV sum classes with the CSV sum module in the py module function at the bottom of the file. Now we can compile the code and install it into our environment with matcher in develop. And oh, there's a compile error. It seems like we need to make file total clonable, so we can pass a vector of file 
file total objects back up to Python. To do this, we need to add the derive attribute to our file total struct and derive clone to implement the clone trait on our struct. Now everything should compile correctly. To have a mixed Python and Rust project, we have to write our Python code in a place Maturin can see it. There are a few ways to do this, which are listed in the Maturin documentation, but my preferred way is to have a Python module with the same name as the Rust project. In this case, that's CSV sum. In the CSV sum subdirectory, we can add a dunder init.py and a main.py file. I'm also going to add typer all as a project dependency in our pyproject.toml and set the CSV sum entry point to point at the app function in our main module, which we'll write now. Currently, our Rust binary shares the same name, CSV sum, as our Python module. This could cause some confusion and we'd have to do from CSV sum import CSV sum to get to our Rust code. To get around this, we can specify the name of the Rust binary in pyproject.toml. In this case, since we want it to be a submodule of CSV sum, we'll call it CSV sum.rust, meaning we'll be able to import it using from CSV sum import rust. We'll also need to change the py module function in lib.rs to be called rust2. In our main.py file, we can create a typer app with a single command. This command takes in a glob pattern as the first argument, then some optional flags for specifying the header or the index we want. We can do some quick checks that exactly one of header or index is present, then we get our CSV sum object by calling the relevant function in our Rust code. Finally, we print out our total. Now, let's finally install our binary with maturin develop dash dash release. I've created some fake data files for both the header and index case. In each case, I have 10,000 files with a thousand rows of random numbers between one and a hundred. So let's test this out. I'm going to run CSV sum for data headers slash star dot CSV with the heading col one, and it gives us an answer. If I time it by prefixing the command with time, we can see that it takes just over a second to sum 10 million numbers from 10,000 different files. We can do the same test on the files in data slash index and use the column index one, and we see roughly the same results. I promised you that we'd be able to show the largest numbers to get an overview of the files, and that means we're going to need to implement a method on the CSV sum class. Rust methods are defined in an implementation block. We'll annotate the block using the py methods attribute to tell py03 to expose these in Python. And now we'll define a get largest method. This will take a mutable reference to self, our CSV sum object, and a number n, which tells us how many records we want to return. We'll then check that n isn't greater than the number of files we summed, and if it is, we'll return a py value error, which will throw a value error in our Python code. Next, we'll sort our list of files using the total field as our comparator, and then finally return a copy of files 0 to n exclusive. Back in Python, we'll add a dash l flag, which will use the rich library table to print the n largest files once the program completes. If we compile and run it again with dash l10, we'll see the list of files with the 10 largest sums win. This is all great, but can we make it faster? Actually, yes. Rayon is a data parallelism library for Rust. We can add it to our project with cargo add rayon and import the rayon prelude into lib.rs. Then, all we need to do to parallelize our code is replace our calls to paths.iter with calls to rayon's par iter, which will make our iteration happen in parallel. If we compile now, we can see that the total time goes down to around half a second. That's a 3x speed up for changing three lines of code. This easy parallelism is a true Rust superpower. If you wanted to upload this to PyPI, all you'd have to do is run Maturin Publish and it would build the wheel and upload it for you. So now we've built a really cool tool using both Python and Rust. We've used Maturin and PyO3 to create a truly speedy data processing backend and then used the fantastic typer to create a beautiful front end. And it was all super duper easy. I hope this inspires you to go out into the world to write some more Rust with your Python code. But if you're not convinced yet, why not take a look at this video where I try to convince you that Python extension authors no longer need C.